Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar, Track Project Progress and Team Coordination with Autodesk Build. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel, not in the chat panel. Also, a recorded version of this webinar will be available on our website and YouTube channel within a couple days. You'll receive an email with the link when it's available. Before we jump into the webinar, I want to introduce myself and Microdesk to you all. My name is Sarah Pilardi. I'm a structural solution specialist here at Microdesk. My background is in structural engineering and virtual design and construction. Microdesk was founded in 1994 as an Autodesk reseller with a simple mission to assist architecture, engineering, construction, owners, and GIS firms with improving workflows and integrating project delivery technologies. 25 years later, that mission still holds true. Microdesk is a well-established AECO consulting firm with 13 offices in, in the U.S. and the U.K. We have over 230 plus AECO consultants, solution specialists, and software developers that can help in all sectors, all disciplines, and all stages. Some of the hottest topics in the AECO world are globalization, urbanization, and sustainability. Urbanization studies suggest that the U.S. will build 114 cities the size of Boston in the next 30 years. Here at MicroS, we can help to make sure you are prepared to meet those demands. We use software from industry leaders and combine it with our vision and passion for sustainability to meet the demands of urbanization. Our team of industry expert consultants are redefining project delivery and asset management. We're committed to helping clients realize the business benefits of BIM quickly and economically by facilitating the use of innovative technologies and processes. Whether it's streamlining your design, construction, or operations, our consulting team is the nation's largest and most experienced group of AECO technology consulting professionals. Microdesk clients represent some of the nation's largest and most respected organizations and public agencies, including the Port Authority in New, York, in New Jersey, the Denver Airport, Columbia University, amongst many others. To help support the industry with these demands of urbanization, we provide full service consulting. This includes building information modeling services, enterprise strategy and workflow assessments, technology management, mentoring and support, application development, and much, much more. We partner with world leaders such as Autodesk and IBM to utilize innovative technologies and methodologies to empower sustainable design and overcome local challenges. Our vision is to reduce the environmental impact of urbanization by helping the AECO industry to design, construct, and operate better projects more efficiently by leveraging the full potential of BIM, BDC, and asset management. So now, uh, let's get into what today's agenda will be and what we'll be going over. So we'll be doing an overview um, of Autodesk Build. We'll show you how to create a project and review each module within the Autodesk Build. And then we'll do some Q&A at the end. Okay, so Autodesk Construction Cloud brings together the most powerful portfolio of construction management software products in the industry. Supporting workflows spanning of all phases of construction, from design to planning to building to operations. Today, we'll be focusing on one of Autodesk Construction Cloud's newest products, Autodesk Build. Autodesk Build is a comprehensive field and project management software that empowers builders to stay connected all within one platform. Build unites the best of Plan Grid's field collabor collaboration solution and, and BIM 360's project management software with additional new capabilities to further connect data, workflows, and teams from designed operations. Today, we're going to take a look at each module within Build and demonstrate the interconnectability of each module. So let's jump in and take a look. A we'll live demo here. So now we are um, on the project list. This is what it'll, the platform that you'll be taken to once you um, sign in to your unified platform. Here, you'll be able to create a project. Um, you'll be able to see all your projects in your project list. And notice you'll be able to see your BIM 360 projects as well as your unified platform projects. 
You'll be able to edit project templates here. You'll be able to jump into your plan group projects from this, from this page, and then also go into your project profile settings. Now, this again is supposed to be your one-stop shop to be able to jump into all of your projects that are on all the different platforms as we you know, transition into this unified platform. So first, we're gonna take a look at a project template and how you create those. Again, you'll see that you have your unified project templates as well as your BIM 360 templates that you have available to you. Um, you create a project template here, um, but we're gonna jump into one that's already existing so you can see how that information is formatted. We'll jump in. First, it's gonna take you to your configurations. Here you'll have details and permissions. So if you wanna edit the details, it's really just the name here. And then permissions, so this is, um, I'm not gonna call this tricky, but just um, this isn't everybody that will be automatically added to the project when you use this template. This is simply adding members who can use this template to create new projects. Um, and then uh, you would enter their email addresses here, what their role is, if you'd like, if they're a project member or a project admin, and then any pro product access you want them to have. Next, we'll jump into the meat and potatoes of the template. So the first thing that you can manipulate with the template are your files. This is one of your big savers here, right? You know, each company has their different file structure that they want to use, and this is completely configurable to your company standards. So first you'll notice that you have for the field files, and these are all your files that will be accessible on your mobile application. So if you're on your iPad, you're only going to be able to see the files that are and file folders that are in this area. If you're in the web-based application, as you can see, you'll be able to you'll be able to see both for the field and your project files. So you'll be able to see both of these categories. Um, one thing you can also do is obviously you can add subfolders here underneath for the field. Um, you can sort by right A to Z, Z to A by date, and then also you can control your permissions. Not only for the top folder, but you can also do it for your folders within. So here you can go into permissions and you can see that um, we've got everyone in here right now and you can change permissions between view, create, um, edit, and manage. If you were to add somebody, you would add per, by their role. So say if we wanted to add project engineer for your role, we click that and then we could change their permission level from view, um, you have view it so you can view and download files, create, right? There's a couple different for create between publish markups or upload. You have edit and then you have manage, which is your full administration controls. So you can control your permissions for your field folders here, as well as your project file. So again, you can add your folder structure as you need to here. Um, and then you obviously you can delete any folders as you need to or rename. And then next in your template that you can change are your issues, right? So there's going to be a couple options here. First, um, obviously, you have your types, custom fields, and root causes. So again, another time saver, you have all of your out-of-the-box issues that you're used to seeing, right, with your BIM 360 platform. Um, so you have your category as your design, and you have all your different types underneath design. If you wanted to create, uh, oh, actually, let's show you what it would be to edit one of these. So if you wanted to add anything underneath design, you have the flyout over here, and you could edit this category, adding types, type issues here, or add any custom fields. If you wanted to create your own, you could create category or create type. So we'll do create category first, so you can see what that looks like. Um, say if you wanted to have a specific coordination category for MEP coordination. Um, then you wanted to jump in and you wanted to do mechanical, right? And you could just add a, you know, your types as needed here. Um, you could also add any custom fields. They're automatically going to populate the custom fields that you already have created in your settings template. As you make more, they will become available to you and we'll show you how to do that next. And then obviously your status, if you want it active or inactive on this template. This bar just so we don't mess with this template. Um, similarly, if you're creating a type, um, you would need to pick what category it's going to fall underneath that's already created. 
You could um, add the issue type title here, um, any pin labels that you want on that, that issue itself, and then active or act inactive, and then obviously custom field again. Jumping into your custom field settings here, um, we've got two here, compliance and percent complete. Here you could create your own custom field by putting in your uh, field title, um, your field type, right? Is it a drop down, numeric, paragraph, or text? on any description that you want to add, and then you would click Create. And then lastly, in the issues um, area of the templates, you can add any root causes or edit any root causes. So again, root causes is something that's huge for your project managers, for your project executives. It's really, um, it's a data, a piece of data that we used to not have that we can basically say, okay, this was our root cause for these issues that drove this problem. Um, what are how can we prevent these root causes from happening again on our next project? So this is um, a lot, really good information for, for those higher ups. So again, if you click on any of the categories, you can edit the category and you can add any root causes underneath the category and then obviously change from active to inactive. Um, another, obviously we can create categories and root causes. Similarly, just like creating the types, you'd add the uh, title, and then you can add all the root causes underneath it. And then again, if you create a root cause very similar to creating a type issue type, um, you need to pick the root, cate root cause category, um, label the title, and then change for active or inactive. And then lastly, in our templates, we can manipulate the forms. So, in your forms, you see we have four out of the box templates that, that are already here. If you wanted to touch on these, you could jump in here and see edit form template. Um, you can edit the name, you can edit the type. Um, they have all the options for daily report, quality, safety, punch list, commissioning, timesheet, or other. Um, you can see the PDF that's in here already and you can replace it if necessary. You can add weather, notes. You can see who the contributors are, right? So who's gonna be filling out this form. Um, how many contributors uh, there will be, any reviewers uh, once the form is submitted, and then uh, managers, so people that can edit the template settings. And then also you can set if you want reminders sent out daily to your contributors. If we were going to create a template um, here, we could go to create and we go to create template. So you have two options here. You can build from a new form, right? Or you can upload an existing PDF form. Again, time saver for everyone that's got, you know, uh, their forms that they're either doing by paper or they're doing electronically in a different, a different um, platform. So you have those, you can upload them right here and um, use the smart PDF that you already have. Since we don't have that right here, we're gonna use build a new form to show you what that looks like. Um, your next option is that you're going to be able to either do a blank template or create from a template that's already been pre-formatted. For time savings today, I'm going to show you one that's been pre-formatted, but again, it's going to be the same process. If you start started with blank, you're just not going to have um, the categories already created for you, the sections already created for you. So let's do a daily report and we'll click next. Once you're in this daily report template, you can change your title. Um, you can also change what type of template it is against, similar options as we saw before. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, we have sections that are already populated for us, you know, work log, materials, equipment, signature. As you can see, these are grayed out over here. That's because they're already populated in this template. Many notes. So if we wanted to, we could add weather, um, and you would add your location and click update. And then you can add additional sections. So as you can see, we have got a placeholder section here. Um, we could title this section whatever we wanted. We could add as many questions as, as we needed to. Um, and then you can change what type of responses you want in the form. So is it a pre-configured response, text response, number response, single select response, drop down response. Right, so you have all these options here for the type of response that you want for that question itself. And then you can mark if it's required. So again, you can manipulate and configure these forms to be exactly what your field needs, right? Exactly what um, you're already doing and to make it more efficient because it's on the on one platform, it can be done on the iPad and can be submitted in one spot. So 
your entire team can collaborate on them. And we'll take, we'll show you what that looks like in the build platform next. I'm gonna click discard. We're gonna jump out of templates. So just to overview, right? You can have as many templates as you need to, and you can, um, you know, if you wanted to do them for specific market sectors, right? If you wanted one for hospitality, you wanted one for education, you wanted one for commercial, right? Or if you wanted them for different budgets, right? If you wanted, you know, for smaller budgets, one template, for bigger budgets, another, for medium, another. Um, again, you can create as many templates as you need to, to, and configure them to be exactly what you need to support your company standards. Um, last thing I'm going to do before we jump into create project template, I mean, uh, create, uh, sorry, create a new project, is show you some of the profile settings you can manipulate from here. So it's going to jump you into your profile. And first, you're going to have all your personal information. So you know, the basics, your name, and then you have your per professional info, contact info, any links, right, to LinkedIn or websites that you want to have here. You have your security options here with your password and two-step uh, two verification if necessary. Once that populates, it will zoom. I don't want to let it spin for too long. We've got a lot to review, but that's what you would get there. And then next settings, if you ever had to change the language here, that's going to be your first option. And then the other option down here is going to be your communication between Autodesk, right? So as you can see, language, you can change. If you ever needed to change it from English to a different language, you could do that there. And then all your electronic options on how you communicate back and forth for Autodesk with notifications will be there. All right, so now that we've gone through kind of like the, the, the background on how you would create a project, let's just jump right in and show you what it, what it looks like. So to create a project, you would use your project name, right? Project number, um, your account, and then uh, then you would use your project type, project template that, was, that you wanted to create it from, project address, time zone, start and end date, and the project value. And you would click create project. We're going to jump into a project that's already populated and has some information in it so we can take a look what that looks like. But again, that would basically create your project from the templates that I just showed you how to create. And you can start adding all the information and uploading your sheets and whatnot, which I'll show you how to do in just a second. So let's jump in to a project itself. Once you click into your project, it's going to take you to your home page. Here you're going to see information on project progress. You can create any milestones here. You have quick links to your sheets and your members. You'll see work status, so any assigned work to yourself, and then project work that needs to be done. Um, you'll see your site weather based on the location, and then you'll also see who has sank their um, their mobile device, right? So you'll be able to quickly see if people are not working with the most up to date information, and you actually see who's not. At. Um, has their mobile application not updated. As you can see, it's actually me. So um, if you wanted to nudge that, that person as a reminder, you can nudge them and click remind, right? And it's gonna send it to, it's gonna send an email to me and say, hey, you're out of date on your iPad, you need to sync to make sure you have all the latest information. And then lastly on your homepage, you have your recent activity. So this is basically everything that's going on in the project, what is going on, who's it done by, and when it was it done by. So just a nice little, overview of what's going on. Next, we're going to jump into Sheets. As you can see, you have Sheets. You can either, either see them in list mode or you can see them in your grid mode. Um, you can filter your Sheets pretty quickly by version set, right? Any, so you can see we have a Bolton 1, IFC, and a published test set. And then you can also filter them by tax, right? architect, concrete, um, framing, general, structural, um, any tags that have been used on these sheets itself will be an option to filter from. You'll also be able to see your published log. So you're able to see when um, sheets have been published, who they've been published by, and when they've been published, and you'll be able to view those sheets specifically. You jump into your settings, you're able to see your version sets. You can see your permissions on um, who can view um, these sheets and what their view status, right, and their permission level is. And then your advanced settings are really related to related to your public links on sharing these sheets. 
are you going to allow you allow people to share links and then how long will those links be able to be available going back into sheets itself let's jump into a sheet before we add so let's show you how to add them all right so here once we're in our sheet itself you can see um the Right here, you'd be able to see how many version sets. We just have one for this one. But if there's multiple, you could actually go back and forth between those sheets and, and those version sets. Um, you have all of your markup tools on your right-hand side. So you've got you know, your pen, your highlight. You can add any shapes here, text, clouds, right? So all of your typical markups here. But what's nice is if you were to add a markup, again, showing that interconnectability between the tools itself, um, in each module, you can click edit. And here, obviously, you have your typical um, you know, colors that you could change your fill, all that information. But you can also go into links and add references. So as you created a markup here, you could add you know, a reference to a sheet or a file that you have on Autodesk Build or an RFI or a form, right? So anything that you want to link specifically and, and bring that attention to somebody, you could go to that next spot really quickly, you could add here. So again, just a nice way to be able to have all your information in all in one spot and be able to jump back and forth really, really easily. Um, again, I should note here that right now this, this markup is just for me. If you publish, now your entire team can see this markup. Um, and then if you want it just to be your own again, you can unpublish and now it is just for yourself. Um, next thing that we'll add here is an issue. So. Um, these are, again, issues that we took a look, with, look at with the templates. Say if we had an existing condition over in this elevator that we needed to um, bring to elevate to, a, to a potentially an RFI. So we'll add the issue here in the elevator shaft itself. Um, you would be able to edit the title of the issue here, any description. You can assign it to a person. So for now, we'll assign it to myself. Um, you can add any location information that you want, a due date, so we want this figured out by Friday, um, start date would be today, and then add any root causes. So say this is a code compliance issue. Um, and then you could add percent complete. Again, that was a custom field that we added to this issue. And then you can add any references to this issue itself. So let's show you what that looks like. Um, here you could add a photo. So um, let's say we wanted to add a photo from the gallery that we've already created. I'm just going to grab something here so you can see what that looks like. But we can click the photo that we want. You could also upload a new photo here. You know, if you if you um, needed to and it wasn't already on Autodesk Build, um, and you click Add Photo. As you can see, it's completely populated. If you click into it, we're able to see the photo. We're able to see the title. We can actually change the title from here. Um, and then we can see who was added by, when it was it taken, and then uh, and when was it added to Autodesk Build. Again, we can add an RFI. Say this needs to be elevated to an RFI here. Um, we can either add it to an existing RFI or we can create a new one. So I'm going to create a new one so you can see how you can follow it through the platform once we get into the RFI section itself. So we'll create a new, open for review. What's nice here is that the RFI number is um, editable. So if you, you as the subcontractor have your own set of RFI numbers and then the GC has another set, you can put both here for reference so you, so you know what's going on. You can change your title here, whose court it's in, um, the due date for it, and then your question, your suggested answer, a location, and then your priority, high, normal, or low. And then you could create that RFI. So we'll create that RFI so we can track that through this process. Again, that RFI will be right here. You can click into it. It's going to jump us right into the RFI itself in the RFI module within Autodesk Build. Again, just showing that interconnectability between the modules where you have everything all in one platform. Again, that's getting us away from the typical construction siloed information all in different spots. So here, um, I'll show you what we can do once we're in the RFIs, once we get to this module, but I wanted to show you how easy it is to jump from, from spot to spot. Um, again, you can add a photo here, right? Similar idea. You pick it, you can add it yourself, you can add it 
you know, from the references and so on and so forth. Again, easy one for to be able to have that interconnectability between your photos module and your sheets. You're able to measure here, so you cal calibrate your tool and measure. You can change your border outline colors and your fill outline color. So again, all of your markup tools and issues are over on your right. Then you have your navigation tools on the, the bottom of your screen. So here you'll have pan, right? So you can pan your, pan your sheet. You can zoom extents here. You can also zoom your window. So again, all your navigation tools. You can rotate the page here. In your settings, you can also change your configurations as needed. You can change any navigation information as needed, and any appearance that you want to change would all be done there. You can go to full screen if you want, and then you can get out of full screen by hitting that escape button. And then the last thing I want to show you once while we're on the sheets is compare. Those that are plan grid users, you're, you're used to this option. Um, so let's do compare so you can see what, what the capabilities are. So you can compare the same sheet if you wanted to change, see you know, what has changed between each revision. Um, I don't have multiple um, version sets for this sheet, so I can't do it for this step, but all you would do is select the sheet, the same sheet, and change the version set that, set that you want to um, compare. For this one, we'll compare the um, floor plans to the RCP, and I'll show you how to align them if they should come in not aligned. So let's select the sheet we want to compare it to. So I want to compare, compare it to the ground, ground floor RCP. We'll click select. Here, if you have multiple version sets, you can change the version set here. Um, if you needed to change either sheet, you would obviously do that by clicking this button. We'll click compare. And as you can see, they don't come in completely aligned, but we do see the red and blue, and you can see what which is which. So your A102 is red, A202 is blue. Now that we need to align the sheets, we'll click the align tool, and we can use our arrow keys or drag it as needed. So I kind of get it in the right spot with the um, drag, and then I'll zoom in and kind of use my arrow keys to get it just right with the grid lines. So now that I have it set, I'll turn off the align so I don't accidentally drag it out of place, and then you can start doing your comparison as needed, right? It's a quick and easy way to compare sheets. Obviously, your navigation tools right here stay the same, but one thing you can also do instead of just overlay is you can look side by side. So if you wanted to see them side by side, you could easily do that and you can jump back to your overlay really quickly. If you don't want this in your way, you can either hit the X, right? But to bring it back, you can bring your control, uh, your panel back that way. And then to exit the compare mode, just hit exit. So again, a nice tool for you. Lastly, you can export the sheet, you can share or you can print it from this location as well. The last thing I'm going to go over with sheets is how to add a sheet. So we'll click add sheets. You would add your sheets from your computer itself. So let me grab some sheets. Quickly uploads for you. You go to next to version. So let's just call this webinar test. And we can choose the date. So I'm going to choose today's date, but it's going to be important that you actually choose the date that coincides with the revision on that sheet because um, Autodesk Build the Sheets module is going to determine what sheet is current based on this issuance date, and that's all going to be driven by the revision date, right? So you're going to want to make sure that that aligns with the revision date of the sheet itself. If you wanted to add it to an existing version set, you can. You can select which one here. We'll go next to sheet numbers. So as this is populating, it's extracting the sheet numbers for us automatically. So um, let that think for a second. So as you can see, it's trying to find um, the sheet number from the thumbnail that it's on there. Um, as these populate, you can either select all of them at the same time, or you can select individual ones. So if we wanted to select them, so you can see that you can remove move sheets, you can holistically rotate sheets or individually do it. Um, you can change the draw sheet number area. Um, I'm gonna do that for the, the title itself because I don't think that they come in exactly how we want them to, but it's gonna be the same exact process for the sheet area or for the title area. 
And then you can also edit sheet numbers by using the file name as the sheet number. Um, you can order the number of the sheets se se uh, sequentially, or you can use some rules to, to edit um, the sheet numbers here. So again, you can do that holistically or one by one. If you wanted to manually change it, you know, for some reason it wasn't coming through correctly, you could change it right here. So we'll go to next to go to titles and tags. So here, um, those look like you grabbed everything correctly, but I'll still show you how to do it. So say if we wanted to um, change the sheet title area for all the sheets, you'd select the, the um, option to be able to grab all of them. You go to draw sheet area title. It's going to tell me what tool and um, just make, basically tell me, make sure you grab enough area. Um, we'll scroll into where the sheet title name is. We'll go into the selection mode, create the selection. You want to make sure it's going to encompass the entire area that we're expected to see for all the sheets. Next, you could change the language if you needed to. You can change the orientation that should come up correctly as horizontal if they're horizontal, but you can also change it if needed, right vertical up or vertical down. And then you can click delete as well. We'll click save. It's going to extract those titles directly from the location that we, we asked it to. So as you can see, this one isn't exactly aligned with the rest. So um, we could fix just that sheet by going into title area, click OK. Again, same process, but because of what's being shown there, it's picking up not exactly what we want. Click save and it's going to extract that title for us. Here we can also add our tags, right? So this is helpful when we were filtering. So if we needed to add a tag for whatever reason, right? If, if this was, you know, we want to add this as a PT slab or this is a PT plan, we can add that tag here and then it's going to be populated so you can actually grab that for other sheets as well. Once we're done with adding any tags and making sure all of our sheet titles are correct, we'll do publish sheets. And it's going to go push us into our uh, sheets catalog. And it's automatically going to filter down just so we can see the version set and see that they're there. We're going to get rid of the filter itself and show everything here. Um, one other thing that I didn't show while we were in the sheet, when you upload them, it will automatically uh, create hyperlinks for your sheet you know, your call outs, your details, your sections, which is something nice that you'll be able to jump from sheet to sheet. So all you have to do is click the hyperlink. This is referencing 2A302. Uh, you can see that, um, that thumbnail there, and we can jump right into the sheet. So again, quick way to be able to go back and forth from your sheets, your sections, your elevations, to be able to um, not have to do that manually yourself. All right, so that's everything for sheets. Next, we'll jump into files. So this is going to be exactly the same. I'm not going to um, hit on this too crazy because it's really the same exact process that I showed you with the template. It's just going to be, obviously, once you're in your project itself, it's for your project-specific information. So again, you can change, once you're in here, you can um, upload any files that you need to, to specific folders. You can filter the files here. Oh, I got to click the file itself to show the filter options. So the filter is going to be based on what's in the folder itself. As you can see, we can do file type here. Oh, let's see if there's something else. So in this, in this filter, we can see um, the type and the version. So again, the filters are going to be dependent on what's actually in that folder itself. You can look at the files in list mode or grid mode. And then you can also go into settings. So any attributes that you want related to your files itself, and you can create attributes. And then you can have advanced settings on um, your links again. So jumping into files, similar as before, for the field are going to be all your folders that you can see on your mobile application. And then for the field and project files, you're going to be able to see on your web application. You can upload files, again, just dragging them in from your computer itself and uploading. And then obviously you can, um, similar to what you've had options for before, rename, share, your attribute settings, you can move your folder, sort by. Here you can control your permissions just like, we're, just like we talked about 
in your template, and then you can also submit for review, right, and create a transmittal from here as well, similar to what you're using with MP60. Um, next, we'll jump into issues. So, um, all the Vin360 users, you're used to how this is kind of set up. You can create an issue from start over here, but since we already created an issue, we'll, we'll jump into that one. Um, other things that you can do is change your columns that are um, above for your issue log, and then you can filter your issues, right, by issue ID, by category that they're within, the type. Um, the status, so if it's open pending or in review, who's it it's assigned to, start date, right? So you have all these filter options, including root cause, um, any custom fields. And then obviously you've got your issue settings, right? So this would be same idea of how we edit it in the template itself. You just edit it for the specific project in the, in the settings. So you could add types, custom fields, permissions, and root causes. And then to open up an existing, um, all you have to do is select it and you'll have your issue fly out to your right. Here we can add any additional information, right? Is this issue evolved? Do you have any information that we want to add to it? But as you can see, we can also see the placement that we had. If we click into it, it's going to take us to that spot in that sheet that we created already, right? So it's taking us right back to that elevator shaft that we created this issue for. It also will obviously have any references that you've already added, and you could add more, right? If you're at the point, okay, I need a few more references, we added a few files, right? You can actually reference other RFIs, multiple RFIs if you need to. And then as you, as you can see, we can jump into the photo itself like we did before, or the RFI. Another thing with the issue itself is that you can go into the activity log. Here you'll be, again, be able to see what is, um, you know, what happened has happened on this issue, what has been done, who has it been done by, and when it has it been done. Again, just to be able to keep that collaboration and that transparency between all project team members and have it all in one spot again. So that is, you know, you're really leveraging this platform to its fullest capabilities. Once you jump into forms, you'll see your forms log here. So you'll see drafts assigned to me. Um, here you can manipulate any templates, right, if you needed to add more that were specific to this project. Um, same, same, um, same workflow as I showed you for the templates for a project template. Um, as you can see, you can see the forms from templates, and then you can see any forms that were already created. So if you wanted to jump into a form itself, you can see all the form details here, any references that were added to the form itself. Um, and then the log the materials, right? And you can see that this one was submitted. If you needed to create a new form, all you need to do is hit create. You pick from your templates that you wanted to create from. Let's say we wanted to do a um, daily safety inspection. Here we would have all the fields that we, we needed to add in here, add a description, any reference that we references that we wanted to add. Again, really leveraging that one platform location, right? add any photos, issues, files, and forms. Um, and as you can see, what's nice is that you don't only have to add what's already been created for you, you can create a new one right here, right? If, you, if you're in the midst of this, uh, or developing this form and adding all the information, you're like, oh man, this issue came up. I need to create this issue. You don't need to jump out of the form itself. You can create it right here and um, add that information as a reference. And then you can add any notes. This one is a, um, a template that was created from a P smart PDF, so you can click into the fields itself and add all this information. Once you are done, you can click submit and you can submit your form. Similarly, you have your filters option over here, so you can filter the forms by date, created by, the status, any template or notes. So again, which is a nice, I know I keep emphasizing this, but again, these all, the, all these things were siloed and used, used to be in, in different buckets in different places, either on the network or different platforms. These are all in one spot and can be connected to all your different modules. Next, we'll jump into photos. So here you can add a photo if you want to upload. You can, you can uh, basically uh, 
sort by the photos by um, date taken, date added, title, you know, ascending or descending order. You can filter the photos as needed, right, by title, um, by date taken or date added, the photo type, any references, any tags added to the photo, and then who it was uploaded by. And then another nice feature is right now we're in gallery mode, where you can jump into the map mode itself here. And this is really nice because we can see exactly where the photo was taken on your job site. So and as you scroll in more, you can see kind of how um, these move on your job, move to the site or the spot they were taken to. So this perspective from which they were taken from. So as you can see, there's two photos taken from this one location. Um, what I kind of like, instead of just terrain, you can also use satellite so you can kind of see what your job site looks like during that specific time and then after. So as you can see, there's these two photos that were taken from the spot. If I click into this photo again, I could change the title, add any tags as I want to. You can see the latitude and longitude uh, from where the photo was taken, who it was added by, when it was taken, and when it was added to Autodesk Build. So again, all your photo information here could be easily accessible. And then again, you can see these are pictures all taken of the envelope itself from that location. All right, so that covers your photos. Jumping into RFIs, um, you can create an RFI from this spot. Um, we're going to take a look at the one we already created that was associated with that issue that we, we de developed. <clears throat> and then um, you can export the RFIs as needed, either PDF or Excel. You can filter the RFIs and obviously search them as well. So you can filter them by status, who's ported in, due date, any cost impact, schedule impact, right? Category, priority, discipline. So you have all these filtering options. And then obviously you have your settings. This is important because um, we'll, we'll go into settings and review the RFI workflow itself. So you can change your RFI workflow from the default, which is just your creator, your manager, and your reviewer. If you want to detail, version of what this workflow looks like, right? This is what we're typically used to in the construction industry, right? Your creator and your manager draft it, that creator sends it to the manager, which is usually the GC to review it. They have the option of uh, sending it back to the creator itself as closed because they already have the answer, or they're gonna send it on to the reviewer. The reviewer then has the option to either reject it or approve it and send it back to the manager. And then from there, the manager has the option to either read the response, feel like that is a, a good response, and they're going to close it and send it to the creator, or they can return it back to the reviewer to make to get further clarification. So it can be can be a two way communication, right? So it's not just um, you're not just uh, kind of stuck to just passing it to the next person. You can send it back as needed. If you have a two reviewer workflow, you can change that here. And obviously you could see that detailed workflow so you can see if that meets your needs. Now that you have an understanding of who the creator, manager, and reviewer is, you can jump into permissions and you can add people by their user name, like with their user information, the role or their company, and then you can select the role that they uh, will be playing throughout this workflow. And as you can see, you can actually make more than um, you can have more than one role assigned to that person. Jumping back to the RFI itself, this is the one that we created earlier, I believe. Yes, and then um, you can see, you know, if there's a cost impact, we could add that. Is it there's a schedule impact? Um, this is not the same one. Uh -huh. This is the one we did earlier. So RFI 17, this is the one based on the existing condition. So as you can see, the issue that we created this RFI is already referenced. Um, here you can change any information on cost impact, schedule impact, location. If you have a co-reviewer that you want to add, obviously, again, the suggested answer like we saw before. If you have any additional references that you want to add here. So now, um, now that it's been escalated to an RFI, we want to add a uh, potential change order to this reference, right? We can add these here, any photos, any sheets, any files. 
Um, you can change the discipline, the category, any external ID information, and then obviously the distribution list. So this might not be the reviewer, but you need a handful of people on your team to be able to um, see this RFI and use this RFI. That's where you're going to add those kind of people in your distribution list. Once you're done, you can go and submit it for your official response. Um, So this actually, so this is a little confusing. I'll consider a reviewer so I can submit an official response. So your reviewer will basically will get this as um, that once it's open and in review and it's sent to your reviewer, they can add their official response and send it back to the manager, just like that workflow that we took a look at earlier. You now we can also open or void these at this point. So let's say you want to do answer, official response, you know, X, Y, Z. Submit. And now that information has been submitted. So next we'll jump into our submittals. All right, so this, um, this workflow is basically creating your submittal um, like registry. So all the submittals that need to be submitted on is what you're, what you're creating here, not necessarily adding that information. So similar workflow to what you're used to is that you create, you know, you'd say as GC, I need these submittals. You would pick your um, responsible contractor to upload that information. They would send it back to you. The manager of GC would review that, send it on to the reviewer. The reviewer would take a look at that and then send it back. So that's, that's what this platform facilitates. So you can create items and then you can create packages and obviously your spec section. So just jump into specs. You can obviously create a spec from um, here. You just put your spec number and spec title as needed. Um, packages. This is basically be able to put multiple submittal items into one spot. Note that there is no such thing as a package approval. So if you have you know five items and four of them are approved within the package and one is not, it's not going to hold up those four. It's just packaging them together so you can have them like in one clean setting. So as you can see, we've got you know two uh, two open concrete um, submittals and one closed. That one that's closed and sent out for um, sent out to the field can be used, right? It's not holding anything up by being in that package. Then jumping into items, which is the most important part, is that um, you can jump into one that's already been created and you can see the activity log of what's happened so far. You can see the general information. You can see that it's been submitted, it's been sent for review, it's been reviewed and approved as noted, and now it's back in the manager court, which is me, to either and to close and distribute. And then I also have the option to return it back to the reviewer as needed. So um, you can see all the general information that's been added. Um, and you see any attachments, you see the planning and tracking down here, who the participants were. So you know, this was one that I, you know, went all the way through and we'll, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, but you have your manager, your reviewer, your co-reviewers, your responsible contractor, and then anybody on your distribution list, and then all the activity that's happened on this specific submittal. So to quickly show you what that looks like, obviously you've got export options here. Um, you have options for your settings for the permissions um, and then responses that the reviewer will have available to them, right? Approved, approved as noted, for record only, revise and resubmit, rejected. You can add any responses as necessary. So to create a new item here, say we, you either could create a new spec section, spec section altogether, or you can select one that's already created, add any subsections. Let's say this one is uh, cast and plates, concrete, level two framing. You can add the description here, um, any packages you want to add it to, and you can create a package here if you need to, but we're going to add it to this package. Um, the type of submittal that it is, right, attic stock certification. For this one, it's going to be shop drawings. Who the responsible contractor is. So this is going to be the person that's responsible for uploading the submittal information, right, at the end of those attachments, anything that's needed based on that spec to, to get approved by the designer, by that reviewer. So, so you can see what this kind of review process looks like. I'm just going to pick myself. 
Um, you can pick the date that you want it due. I want it today, and it's a high priority, so we're going to change that. Um, we can add any attachments as the manager to 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 the submittal as necessary. And then you can add any planning information. We'll click create, and now as you can see, it's up here, and you see that you it's required and it's waiting for a submission. So since I am the responsible contractor, I can come in here. And I can click submit and add any information that I need to, right? So let me add PDF to this. So now we're adding the frame and layout here. And you can choose the manager that's responsible to, to basically submit this to the reviewer. Take a look at this, make sure it's right, and then get it to the reviewer. So I'm going to pick myself just so, you, again, you can see that process and what it looks like. Um, you can add any notes here and click done. And as you see, we made it to the next step. So now we're at the prepare for review step. Now it's my job as the manager to review that, that, that attachment and make sure it meets the needs of the submittal and then send it on for review. I've done that. I'll click submit review. I then can pick the reviewer. This is when you would pick you know, the architect, the engineer, right? The responsible party for reviewing this submittal. Right now, again, I'm just picking myself so you can see what this workflow looks like as we make it through the steps. You can add a co-reviewer, um, the review by date. Again, we want it, we want it quick, we want it today. And then a distribution list. So anybody that needs to know about the submittal that's going to impact their work and add any notes as needed. Again, you could also add additional files if you got them um, as you're reviewing this process. Click done. And now we're on to the submit to review portion of this. So now as the reviewer, you know, as the architect, as the engineer, we're going to review this information, make sure it meets um, the spec, meets the drawings, meets and, and all the other uh, requirements. We'll click review. We can add any markups, um, add that information here, and then we can send it back our official response. So let's say, okay, we're going to approve this. And then we can add any response comment notes as we needed to. You can also save and submit later. We won't. We'll click done. And now, as you see, it's back in that manager's port to close and distribute this, uh, this submittal. So then it can get released to the field and implemented for install. So that is the submittal process. Next thing that we'll review is meetings. I know that I'm coming up on time, guys. As I said, there's a ton of information to cover here. We're going to go over meetings, reports, and then just do a just wrap it all up into one big bow. Um, so as you can see, we've got some um, meetings already created in here. So let's jump into an agenda that's already created. And as you see, there were some invitees, right? So you have your title up here, um, the date of the meeting itself, the time. Um, you can see that it's an agenda. You can change this, right? Because obviously you're going to move from agenda to meeting minutes eventually. So you'll be able to change that up here. Um, you can add lo location. You can add your invitees um, and all your um, all your meeting discussion points. I'm going to show you what it's like to create from the beginning, just so you have that information. We'll create a meeting again, time, date, so we and we have the time, right, location. We can click into invitees and add invitees as necessary. So we'll click, you know, the first couple people that are on the list here. We'll click done so you can see those that automatically populate. You can add some references here. So note that these are overall meeting references. So you can add files or sheets that you're going to need to go over in these meetings. Um, next, I'm going to show you how you add references to, to specific discussion and topic items. And then obviously you have the option to do export PDF. I'll show you what it's like to create a follow-up meeting because this makes it really easy to be able to grab your open items and go to your next meeting and not have to copy and paste them. Um, so here you can add any meeting discussion or descriptions here, and then you can add your discussion points. So say if we were had, you know, our main topic is coordination and we needed to add, um, or we'll actually we'll, we'll talk about the existing condition in the elevator that we had a problem. So we'll do existing condition, we'll add elevator. So 
we added that elevator topic. And as you can see, we can add our due date. So let's just say Friday. We can add the assignee. So we'll assign myself to this. And as you see, that's automatically populates. And then you can add references. So again, we, we created an issue for this already. We created an RFI for this. So let's do, we'll add the issue itself. This existing condition was our problem. So we're adding that as a reference. Now as that's selected over in your references and, and items, you can cl click into that issue. It's gonna take you directly to that issue. Again, if I needed to add a different reference, we wanted to add that RFI we just created. We could easily do that here. This one. Now you can also create RFIs and create issues on the fly as needed as well, right, with your references. You can add as many topics as you need to, and you can add as many items underneath those topics as you need to, right? So just a quick way of being able to type up everything that's going on in your meeting, Who's the assignee that's going to be in charge of tracking that down and getting that action item done? And then any references that they're going to need to be able to complete that action item. You can also change your status from open to close. So I'm going to just show you what it looks like real quick. We'll add another item and we'll say um, uh, utilities. And this item was closed. We actually figured that out in the meeting and it was all taken care of. No, you could also add any meeting summary information down here as needed. So once this meeting was done, we change this to meeting minutes. Um, you can mark it as a meeting minute. But say, all right, we're going to have a follow-up meeting based on the information that we discussed here. I'll do come over here, do create follow-up meeting. I'll pick the date that we're going to follow up on. And as you see, it's thinking, but basically what it's doing is it's grabbing all the open items that we still have from, from that original meeting and bringing that into the meeting discussion and then eliminating anything we have closed. So again, it just helps you populate your agenda for that next meeting because these are items that are action items that are still open and we'd still need to make sure that they're taken care of. Jumping back into your meeting log, obviously you have your filter option and you can change it. You can filter by the date in which that agenda was creating or those minutes were created. All right, so lastly, we're gonna go into reports. Maybe we won't be going into reports. Yeah, with me, guys. Should have a video just in case this exact thing happens. Uh. <laughs> Okay, for some reason, it's not wanting to load my reports, but I do notice that we are at two o'clock here, so I am going to wrap it up. Basically, what happens with reports, I'll just kind of describe it. It's pretty easy. You can run your reports like based on your issues that have been created, um, any, uh, you know, you can create an issue log, you can um, create, you know, submit a log, an RFI log that's been run, and um, you can run it on a, you can schedule it to run, be run on a weekly basis, and I can show you what those reports look like when they do come out, I believe. So let me show you one of them just so you can take a look at that. All right, so once you run the report, this will be the um, PDF that gets exported. So you can see when it was created, who it was created by. Um, these are all options when you run this report. So you can sort by and filter by. Um, how many total items are within the report? You can jump into the context itself. So um, you can do you know, um, 
These are all hyperlinks, so you can jump right into the issue itself. So if I click this, it's going to take me right to that issue. And then you can see how many issues were opened at that time when the report was run and, and see that information that's related to these. So this is nice if you wanted to attach it to a meeting minute or you need to run the reports for external users or just need this information on a weekly basis to be able to track the project of your team. So that is how your reports would basically your, your output of your reports would happen. Um, anything I can do. Okay, this is a quick video that shows you how the reports are generated. So I don't want to, you know, leave you on a cliffhanger. So you go into reports, you can create a report. You can go into settings here and change the language of the report as needed. Um, once you create report, you can change what type of report. So as I mentioned, issue detail, issue summary, RFI summary, submittal item detail, and submittal item summary. You can choose what type of report you want to run. Here we're running an issue report. So as you can see, you can change the title here. You can change the file format as, as needed from PDF to Excel. You can change any filters that you want to, to run the report based on. So if you want to filter by status, or type, assign to, start date, due date, root cause, right? Um, so we'll do by status. We're going to run the report for all the open, pending, and in review statuses for the issues. And then we can sort, do sort by. So again, you sort by status ID. We're doing it by due date. You can do by ascending or descending order here. You can add additional sorts that you want to sort by. You can also add additional, additional filters you want to sort, sort by if needed. Um, but here we won't. We'll just keep it simple. And then you can run the report. So again, that report will be generating in background and um, you'll get an email when that's ready for you. Note, um, I think I'm also going to show that you can schedule reports to be run, so you don't have to run them manually yourself. You can go into schedule report. Schedule report, you can decide if you want it to be done on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. You can see um, if you want it done every week, every two weeks, right? You pick what day it's run on, what time it's run at, the start and end dates. Um, you can also do by, um, you know, who, who, what project members you're going to share with, and if it's a member or a role or a company that needs to be shared to. And you have all of these options pre-populated for you. You can share with others that are not on the project, so you need to email, email out to external users, and then you can add a message, message and you can save the schedule. So it's run on that time frame every, every week or every month or whatever you chose. And you can download your report. And then this is the report that we just went through. So I'm not going to waste your time with that. To wrap a big bell on this, I know I'm running a little bit behind. I went through a ton of information. I know I talked very quickly. This is a reminder there will be a um, recording of this posted to our Microdesk uh, YouTube channel at a later date. So you can go back and review all the information that we went over. But, these are my big benefits of using Autodesk Build, but I think that um, make it such a, a useful and um, collaborative platform that um, really transforms how you uh, deliver your project. So it's customizable and configurable um, for all of your workflows. No matter what company you're at, you really can change it to meet your company's needs. Um, it promotes coordination and collaboration on one unified platform, right? So we saw how you can track that information from issue to RFI, from your sheets, right? So it's all in one spot, and you're able to quickly and easily jump back and forth between them. Um, as I just hit on, seamlessly manage and connect your RFIs, your issues, your forms, files, sheets, and change orders. Um, you can streamline and simplify the submittal process, right? So you're used to having it all in different spots or submitting in different areas, right, and saving that PDF in a different spot. It's all in one spot for your entire team to be able to see and be able to see where we're at within that submittal um, process and that review process. You have centralized meeting minutes, right? So everybody knows what happened in that meeting, if they were in it or not, and they could jump in there and you can see the open action items. You can see who's assigned to and any references that were needed to be able to complete it. You can track construction progress. That's something that's coming in the in um, in a module. It's called 
uh, progress tracking. You basically be able to create objects, you know, that you want to track, whether that's concrete walls, and then you can uh, create the different um, status types underneath it. So for concrete, you could change the status from form, form to rebar installed to uh, poured to cured and then form work taken off, right? And our quality assurance, right? And then you know that it's complete. And each one of those statuses would have a different color pattern and you basically would add that highlight to that, um, to a sheet be able to track that progress. And that's forthcoming, right? That, that module is, is not currently available, but will be available. Um, you've got a centralized issue management location. You have standardized quality control and safety planning with all of your forms in one spot. Um, and then you can streamline commissioning and turnover process. We didn't go over the asset module, but very simple, similar to the BIM360 assets that was added, um, I believe that was last summer. So again, you able to track all the assets that are on your job, all the information that needs to be handed over and turnover, and um, basically be able to have that all in one spot. So it's not a pain in the butt at the end of the project when you're trying to collect all that information. So again, all in one spot, all in one platform, making it easy to collaborate amongst your entire team. That is my spiel today. Let's see if we have any questions in the webinar. Sorry, I'm jumping through these questions to see if I can answer any of these really quickly. If not, I'll make sure that we take a look at these and uh, get back to you guys, because I know that we're running a little bit behind here. So uh, somebody asked if, if there will be a video posted. Yes, that will be um, posted to our Microdesk YouTube channel. Um, we're going to continue to go through the um, Beautify platform um, uh, module. So I know today we went through build. Um, the next one that I believe we'll be going over is Takeoff um, and Collaborate Pro. So um, that is forthcoming. Let's see what else. Um, next, uh, another question that was in here is in order to review something, does one need a build permission license? As of right now, yes, that was something that was, um, uh, you did not need a license for plan get grid to be able to review the, um, review any of the submissions, right? So if an architect didn't have a plan grid license, they could still review that submission and add it back into plan grid. That's something that's not available right now in build. Um, it is a bring your own license. Um, Bring your own license set up as of right now. Okay, someone said I thought build has cost controls, but didn't I didn't didn't get further in here, but it does have cost controls. We just didn't review that today. There's actually a completely different cost um, setup in here for, for me today. If you go into cost. We just did not have time to be able to get through all this information. But there is a cost module within Build itself, and you can add all your information in terms of your budget, right? Your PCOs, your RFQs. Um, and yeah, my internet is running a little slow today. But you've got all your information here. So in income, expenditures, change orders, your files, reports, and any members. So there is a cost module. We just didn't go through that today. All right, there's a few other questions in here, but I want to make sure that we wrap up because we are running um, over on time here. Uh, somebody did ask if you add 360 photos, you can add three, 360 photos to the um, to the photo module within build. All right, so any questions that weren't answered, I'll make sure to get through these and get back to you guys. Um, if you guys have any further questions that come up, um, please reach out to us. 
at this information. I appreciate you all taking the time to be a part of this webinar. Um, and if you need any future needs about Autodesk Build or any other Autodesk um, software, please reach out to my business. Thanks.